Practice Test 1, page 36, section 1. Summarize spoken text. You will hear a short lecture. Write a summary for a fellow student who was not present at the lecture. You should write 50 to 70 words. You will have 10 minutes to finish this task. Your response will be judged on the quality of your writing and on how well your response presents the key points presented in the lecture. Lecture A I understand that one major concern of yours in running a successful company, especially in the current economic climate, is the question of worker loyalty. Are you saying that such a thing no longer exists? And if so, what are some of the reasons for this? And how important is loyalty to the smooth and successful running of a company such as yours? Well, I do think it's important, but I also realise that we can't go back to the old-fashioned sense of loyalty where an employee would spend his whole working life with one company or business. Mm -hmm. Our grandparents, even our parents' generation, expected long-term employment and their loyalty was rewarded with health care and a pension. This is no longer the case. Many companies are no longer willing or perhaps even able to provide such a financial package. Besides, to a younger generation, sticking at the same job all your life isn't a very exciting or inspiring prospect. Mm. Some reasons for this might be the shortening of contracts, outsourcing, automation, and people holding down more than one job. In other words, we've all had to adapt to the realities of a rapidly changing, fast-paced economy. However, all this is not to say that loyalty is dead. Rather, it has changed emphasis. Today, it is more about trust in that an employee will promise to bring his skills and engage fully in his work for as long as she or he is there. People change jobs a lot more these days, but I still believe that a company is better off with at least a core of people who stay for the long term. Lecture B I'd now like to turn to the Roman, um, Latin writers of the period. Their achievements in the other arts, architecture, painting and sculpture, were rather second-rate and mostly in imitation of the Greeks. And it's true that Latin writers also wanted to emulate the Greeks and used their writers as models, but somehow the language wouldn't allow it. What I mean to say is, the particular qualities of the Latin tongue made for the excellence of their writings, especially the poetry. For one thing, Latin is capable of great compression. That is to say, it can convey in five or six words what we would need twice the number to say. What also helped Latin writing flourish was the nature of Roman education. Whatever its faults, as they would appear to us, its linguistic and literary emphasis seemed designed to produce orators and writers. A drawback of the system was that education was only available to the richer classes of society, and so Roman literature is mainly a product of those classes. This, in turn, meant that the subject matter was fairly limited and narrow in its social reach, though there were exceptions. Lecture C Some economists argue that financial aid to developing countries is, in the long run, inefficient and even counterproductive. However, there are two main types of aid that we will deal with here. First, there is long-term aid to countries such as Ethiopia and Somalia, where there are recurrent problems such as drought and poor agricultural production, and where there is little or no industry to speak of. Problems that won't go away with an injection of money. Then there is emergency aid, which also appeals for contributions from the public when a disaster of one kind or another strikes. Recent examples would be the earthquake in Haiti and the tsunami in Japan. In the case of emergency aid, 
It arrives in the first instance as food, clothing, shelter, and medical aid, all of which are of immediate practical use and great benefit. With countries that have long term developmental problems, just pumping in money is not enough, and, sad to say, a lot of the money doesn't go where it should. What is more important is providing know how, teaching the skills and expertise needed to help develop the economy and social services, such as health, sanitation, and so on. It is also necessary to help build the institutions, a bureaucracy if you like, that can organize and run these services. Practice Test 1, page 39, section 2. Multiple choice, choose multiple answers. Listen to the recording and answer the question by selecting all the correct responses. You will need to select more than one response. Recording A. The heyday of the English landscape garden was the 18th century, and it stood for many things. The appreciation of natural beauty, of course, but also the idea of a civilised life, good taste, one's personal philosophy and one's social status. Gardens also, though it is hard for us to credit, became expressions of their owners' political affiliations. Until the picturesque style emerged as part and parcel of the Romantic movement, gardens had been strictly formal, laid out with mathematical precision following the Italian and French examples. There then came a backlash against this rigid formality, led by, among others, the poet Alexander Pope. Pope and his allies argued for a more natural nature. Lord Burlington was a major figure in the landscape garden movement, and he was famously influenced by his love of the Italian architect Andrea Palladio, along with the picturesque or romanticised landscapes of Italian classical painting. With these in mind, he scattered his gardens and parks with classical Greek and Roman temples and statues. In other words, he wanted to make the garden look like those paintings. Recording B Woodblocks used for pictorial illustration became fairly common in 15th century Europe, but had been used long before that for printing designs on textiles. Most of these were simple in design and quite crudely cut, but some were skillfully drawn and cut, while others even contained pictorial imagery. Records show that woodblock printing on fabrics was practised by the Egyptians as early as 2000 years BC. The oldest existing printed fabric, which is Egyptian, dates from the 4th century. At the same time, the craft seems to have become widely established, even commonplace, elsewhere, for example in India, Mexico and Peru, where the same techniques continue to be practised today. And the technique was almost certainly used by both the Japanese and the Chinese too. Recording C. Political parties in most democracies not only have to win more votes than their rivals to get into power, they also have to persuade the electorate that it is worth their going out to vote in the first place. In the UK, turnout is frequently low, and one reason cited is the weather. Some countries, therefore, have made voting compulsory. It is against the law not to vote, and failing to vote is a punishable offence. In Austria, for example, failure to vote results in an automatic fine, as it does in Australia. As a consequence, voter turnout is rarely less than 92% in both these countries. Other countries have penalties that affect the individual in more practical ways. In Greece, for example, although it is no longer acted on, 
passports were confiscated or not granted, and in Bolivia, non-voters may be banned from using banks or schools for up to three months. The punishment in countries such as France, Germany, the UK, and so on, is seeing the government you didn't elect raise your taxes. Practice test one, page forty, section two. Fill in the blanks. You will hear a recording. Write the missing words in each blank. Recording A. Almost everyone has heard of the London Stock Exchange, but relatively few know anything about the London Metal and Commodity Exchanges. Yet these markets have a greater influence on world economies. Because they set global prices for some of the essential raw materials for industry and food manufacture, the LME provides three basic services to the world's non-ferrous metal trade. First, it is a market where large or small quantities of metal of a guaranteed minimum standard can be bought and sold on specific trading days. Second, it acts as a barometer of world metal prices, and third, it is a hedging medium. That is, it can help traders get some protection from price fluctuations that occur for economic, political, or financial reasons. Recording B. It isn't necessary to have a specialized knowledge of, say, the intricacies of counterpoint, or even to be able to read music to understand it. Usually, getting the point of a piece of music, its emotional and dramatic impact, is immediate, or simply requires you to become more familiar with it. Of course, prolonged study of music and its composition, as in any other field, will increase your understanding, but. Not necessarily your enjoyment. Now I realize that it can require a good deal of willingness on our part to risk new sensations, and there is a lot of music that will seem unfamiliar and alien to you on a first hearing. Recording C. Before farming was introduced into Scotland, people lived by hunting, fishing, and gathering wild foodstuffs. This way of life meant that they usually didn't settle permanently in one place, but were to an extent nomadic, moving about in search of a livelihood, perhaps returning to the same places at certain times of the year. It is believed that the islands of Orkney were known to these people. But so far, only a few flint tools have been found to verify this. This is because coastal erosion has destroyed many ancient sites, and these may have contained relics of some of these earliest pioneering colonists. Practice test one. Page forty-one, section two. Highlight correct summary. You will hear a recording. Choose the paragraph that best relates to the recording. Recording A. A cliche, as you know, is an overused and worn-out phrase, and、um, these are to be avoided like the plague in your essays. Indeed, someone once said, "I quote." There is no greater danger to either education or thinking than the popular phrase. Let me digress a little further. Originally, a cliche was a printer's term back in the days when letters were set one by one for a ready-made block of type of frequently used phrases, usually in the newspaper business. So there you are.、Um, cliches were also known as stereotypes. 
Now, if you think of graphic design as a language with its own vocabulary, grammar, and so on, it too must have its cliches. Obvious examples would be、um, the twin Greek masks of comedy and tragedy that symbolise the theatre, and more popularly known, the heart as a symbol of love, especially on Valentine cards and so on. Far from being a terrible fault, as it would be in literature, the visual cliche is essential in the world of graphic communication. This is certainly true when it comes to advertising and propaganda. The visual cliche can give immediate life to an idea and a clear meaning to what could be a mere abstraction. Recording B. All whales, dolphins, and porpoises are social animals. Although the degree of sociability varies greatly from one species to another, differences of behaviour have not evolved by chance. Living in close proximity to other animals has certain costs and benefits, so we can expect the group size adopted by a species to be the most suitable for its environment and lifestyle. River dolphins, for example. Have a fairly simple social system, forming small groups of just a few animals, rarely more than ten. On the other hand, many of the oceanic dolphins may roam the seas in groups of thousands. Also, there can be differences within species. For example, with sperm whales, females and juveniles form groups. While adult males are solitary, some of the reasons for living in groups include greater efficiency in searching for and catching food, benefits for mating, learning, defence, and sensory integration. Now, sensory integration is the means by which each animal contributes to the information gained by the group as a whole. And this plays an important part in defence and in the search for food. For example, if one animal discovers a shoal of fish or a hungry shark, it can immediately pass on this information to the others in the group so that all may benefit. A single animal or small group may remain unaware of the food or predator, and so miss a meal. Or suffer an attack. Practice test one, page forty-four, section two. Multiple choice. Choose single answer. Listen to the recording. And answer the multiple choice question by selecting the correct response. Only one response is correct. Recording A. I suppose the reason I got into geology was, well, as a kid I was fascinated by fossils, the fact that they went back countless years, long before there were any people on the planet. That was exciting, and、um, they were beautiful too. And one thing led to another. What fascinates me. Let me give you an example. Suppose we dredge up from the sea floor some silt washed down by a river, and、um, suppose that for political or other reasons we can't enter the country through which that river runs. Well, by careful study of the particles of that silt, we can form a pretty accurate picture of the nature of that country, not just the rocks, I mean, but the vegetation and animal life of the area. I sometimes think what we do is a bit like、um, Sherlock Holmes. You know, he takes a look at a man's shoes and can tell you which field in which county in England he's been in and when. That sort of detective aspect of the work is always interesting and exciting. Okay, we do spend time in the lab and at the computer, but we do get out and about and go to interesting places for field work. Recording B. 
What troubles me when I'm asked the question, can creative writing be taught, usually asked in a skeptical tone of voice, is not that I can't find an answer, but trying to figure out why I'm being asked. What do they want me to say? No, of course it can't. I just like taking people for a ride. I'm a con artist. Obviously, you can't teach someone to have a talent for storytelling or a love of language or how to write extremely well. But there are important lessons to be gotten across that will improve their writing and, at the very least, make it publishable. For me, the best starting point is the habit of close reading, really close, and responding to the language. Forget about grand themes and ethical content whatever for the moment and ask if the author writes badly or well. So, writing can be taught through reading, through literature. Then I'd say, when it comes to your own writing, that you need to learn how to edit, to know when to say, you don't need that word or that sentence and that whole paragraph can go. It's one of the most important lessons a writing class can teach. As for producing a Tolstoy or a Dickens, well, people like that tend to get there by their own route. Recording C It is not often I get the chance to talk about the psychology of pop music or... Rather, the lyrics and the effect they have on young people. I must say at the outset that I'm not at all sure about the findings of a recent survey I've been studying, conducted over a period of 30 years. In short, it claims that late adolescents and college students are more narcissistic than ever before. This might well be true, and it might also be true that pop lyrics are becoming more self absorbed negative, and violent. But this might reflect the psychology of the writers and performers more than their listeners. Also, as the writers of the study are alarmed to discover, this radical increase in narcissism comes with higher levels of loneliness and depression, which, if you think about it for a second, is hardly surprising. Furthermore, they have detected a link with heightened anger and problems maintaining relationships. Now, a couple of points. First, adolescents are pretty much self-absorbed anyway, but it's rarely pathological. Also, you can read almost anything you want into song lyrics from any era. Again, people nowadays find it easier to express themselves emotionally than their counterparts did 30 years ago. Last, the survey suggests a complete personality change over the period covered, Yet I doubt that personality traits can change so much from one generation to another, or for that matter, from one culture to another. Practice Test 1, page 45, section 2. Select Missing Word you will hear a recording about the brain. At the end of the recording, the last word or group of words has been replaced by a beep. Select the correct option to complete the recording. Recording A We learn most about ourselves and the way we function, both physically and mentally, when things go wrong. For a long time, it was thought that the brain acted as a whole in governing the body's functions. Then, in 1861, Paul Broca, a French anatomist and anthropologist, discovered that different parts of the brain perform different functions. After carrying out a post-mortem examination on a patient who had had a severe speech impediment, he discovered, as he had expected, Damage to a section of the left frontal lobe of the brain. The left side of the brain governs language ability. The patient's problem had been that he could only utter one syllable, though he fully...
you will hear a recording about money. At the end of the recording, the last word or group of words has been replaced by a beep. Select the correct option to complete the recording. Recording B. The Chinese were, as far as we know, the inventors of paper money, and because it was so easy to move around compared with coins, it was named flying money. They were also the first to experience an economic problem, which has become all too familiar. By the 12th century, there was enough money in circulation to cause serious inflation. In Europe, it wasn't until about 1400 that bankers in Spain and Italy began to honour bills of exchange, which were a kind of private paper money not in general use. They were documents used by those involved in a business transaction in which payment was made through a third party to avoid the cost of foreign exchange. However, it is the Swedes who are generally credited with producing the first proper European bank. Practice test one, page forty-six, section two. Highlight incorrect words. You will hear a recording. Below is a transcription of the recording. Some words in the transcription differ from what the speaker said. As you listen, circle the words that are different. Recording A. When the European Economic Community was established in nineteen fifty-seven. Its aim was, in broad terms, to move towards closer political and economic cooperation. Today, the much larger European Union has a far-reaching influence on many aspects of our lives, from the conditions we work under to the safety standards we must adhere to, and the environment in which we live. In order to achieve the free flow of goods and services, workers and capital between the member countries. They needed to establish mutual policies in areas as diverse as agriculture, transport, and working conditions. When they had agreed on these policies, they became law. Now, though, the EU is concerned with a far wider range of issues. Recording B. Stem cells are the body's master cells, the raw material from which we are built. Unlike normal body cells, they can reproduce an indefinite number of times, and when manipulated in the right way, can turn themselves into any type of cell in the body. The most versatile stem cells are those found in the embryo at just a few days old. This ball of a few dozen stem cells eventually goes on to form everything that makes up a person. In 1998, James Thompson announced that he had isolated human embryonic stem cells in the laboratory. At last, these powerful cells were within the grasp of scientists to experiment with, understand, and develop into fixes for the things that go wrong. Practice test one, page forty-six, section two. Write from dictation. You will hear some sentences. Write each sentence exactly as you hear it. Write as much of each sentence as you can. You will hear each sentence only once. Hundreds of scientific papers have been published on global warming. Political power only disappears when this stage has been completed. Social networks are changing the way we communicate. The cotton industry purchased all its raw cotton from abroad.